afternoon. Welcome to the Chai Center. And welcome to the Chai Academy. So we, um, we're, we're in the middle. I think we have done three or four of this new course, each one independent of the other. And it is fascinating Jewish personalities. You know, we're not just going to only stick with the good ones, but the bad ones and the ugly ones. You know, some, some, um, you know, is there, is there, is there a Jewish personality that's bad? Yeah, yeah, th there is. <laughs> uh, you know, I wish I could say not, but we, we already discussed the bad one, Trotsky. Um, but, uh, but for the most part, for the most part, I think we're pretty, we're pretty darn good. Um, today's, today's topic, today's person we have chosen is the founder of Hadassah, the movement Hadassah. And, um, and her name is Henrietta Zold. Now she was born in Baltimore, United States. She was born in 1860. Believe me, if she was born in 1960, she would have had a very different life. But she was born in 1860. She was the eldest of eight daughters, and um, her, her her father was a um, was the rabbi of a synagogue in Baltimore called Ohev Shalom. It's a reform synagogue, and um, he was he was uh, you know pioneer in the in the American reform movement. He um, and and. Um, his daughter, this one specifically, really veered to to the conservative movement more than the reform movement. Um, Ohev Shalom, by the way, just a, an FYI, it's 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 still in existence. It's in Baltimore. It is considered the highest, the highest point of Baltimore. The parking lot is, um, you know, is the, considered the highest point, the highest, uh, you know, the high point. Um, topographically, anyway, she was she was um, high, she was a wise, brilliant individual, and uh, you know she was highly educated, specifically on Jewish topics. She had a vast knowledge of of Jewish topics and and of Judaism. She actually um, edited something that I probably couldn't do. She edited a Talmudic dictionary, so that as you know, Talmud is vast. And the Talmud is, is 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 written in Aramaic, so there was a dictionary, and she actually edited it, I believe, from German to 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 English, and she corrected things. Just just brilliant. She was also an entrepreneur. I mean, she saw the need. She saw the need for a, uh, a, a Russian immigrants coming into Baltimore, so she 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 founded a night school. Where, where these Russian immigrants could learn English. And um, at the age of 33, she became the editor of JPS, Jewish Publication Society, which is the publication arm of the conservative movement. And it's interesting, she was the only woman in the entire staff, let alone the editor. And um, her job was vast. It was, it was, it was translating, it was editing, it was writing, she wrote articles, etc. A very, very accomplished woman. Um, in in um, 1899, um, she she was uh, she was the, the only woman and the first woman and only woman at that time to be elected to the Federation of of American Zionist organization, which was extremely prominent in the in the, in the you know that that, that era, and uh, she was elected to the board. She was elected to the board of, of, of the Federation of the American Zionist Organization. Um, the only female. Um, and um, at the age of 42, she joined the Jewish Theological Seminary. And um, it was a male only, it was a male only place. And, um, and she joined and she, she actually begged by the leader at that time was Solomon Schechter who these, the conservative schools are called Salman Shechter. So if you hear of a school Salman Shechter, you should know it's a conservative-based school. So she begged him to let her study 
in, in a higher institute of learning, and he did, but there was a caveat, is that she could not be ordained. So he said, you can study, but it will not lead to ordination. You cannot become a rabbi. Now in 1960, things would have been different, but in 1860, etc. At the age of 49, she, she visited Israel, and, um, and, and that's where she really found her passion and her calling. So a very accomplished woman um, before she visited Israel. But she visited Israel, and, um, and, and she founded, she founded Hadassah. Um, she recruited U.S. women basically to upgrade the health organizations. She started something which was so novel in her time, the visiting nurse service. She started a hospital. She started a soup kitchen. She started a, a, a medical clinics. She, she, um, she, she x-ray clinics. Right and uh, um, like so much stuff to, just to, just to help, and it was for all peoples. It was all it was interesting. She wanted it to not only be for Jews; she wanted it to be for Arabs. There were many Arabs who rejected, who rejected the Hadassah services, social services, because, because they said, "Oh, this would look good in 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 in, in the papers that the Jews helping Arabs." So they rejected it. Um, and, 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 and she really made a difference, really, really made a difference. Um, at the age of 49, by the way, not 1949, at the age of 49, in 1909, um, in 1933, she emigrated to Israel. When she emigrated to Israel, in addition to Hadassah, which occupied God knows how many hours of her day, she also founded something called the Youth Aliyah Movement. What that was, it was a way she, uh, she saw, she had the vision, she saw that, that, that Nazism and, and anti-Semitism was, was on the rise in, in Germany and, and in Europe. And she was able to, and it's, it's hard to know the number, but this is the range, just to give you the magnitude. She managed to save by absorbing youth, children, into Israel, convincing the families, send your kid to Israel. We'll protect them, we'll take care of them, we'll, 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 we'll give, teach them a profession, etc., etc. So the, the, the lowest amount was 22,000. 22,000. If these kids were in Germany, they would have died. 22,000. 22, you know, it's, some people say as high as 30,000. Now, if you just think of the sheer number that she saved, these 22,000 kids went on to marry and have kids of their own. And these kids of their own had kids of their own. If you, and that's why it says, it says in the Mishnah, whoever saves one life saves an entire world, right? Can you imagine what this woman accomplished the, the merit of what she did just 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 incredible and and um, she did this separately from Adassa this was just a life saving you know and, and it had an, it had a, I believe it had an end date this youth Aaliyah I'm, I'm not entirely sure but but um, this is in addition to Adassa um, in 1934 while she was doing this youth Aaliyah movement you know she laid the the cornerstone for the Adassa Hospital, which is in, in is still in existence today on Mount Scopus. Mount Scopus is northeast of Jerusalem, and um, that's where Adassa Hospital is. Um, in 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 nineteen in nineteen forty two, her together with other very well known Jews, one of them, I, if I remember correctly, is, and we'll talk about him. Excuse me. Martin Buber. Um, she founded the Ehud, or Ehud, Ehud party. And this party basically was considered a bi-national party. Nowadays we have another name for it, 
which was it's called a one state solution so you know there's there's two different strategies about how to make peace in Israel which I don't know if it's possible you know this is uh, I've always say there's two there's not enough money in peace and there's more money in war you know if you're at peace you know people are not throwing billions of dollars at you but there's two philosophies one is a one state solution where you know you 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 um, learn to live together um, and you um, you know which which essentially I think Israel has tried to do I mean the Knesset has Arabs in it and um, you know and and um, it, the, those the, those Arabs 1.9 million Arabs living in Israel have equal rights as Jews equal rights and the other one is a two-state solution um, with Jerusalem as as the capital you know East Jerusalem the capital of this West Jerusalem, it's not gonna work but it's a two-state solution essentially is the two separate governments on the same um, you know this uh, the same people and and uh, and so that what there is right now is, is kind of it's when nowhere in between so so the West you know the West Bank Judea and Samaria I'm not gonna call it the West Bank Judea, Judea parts of Judea and Samaria large chunks um, is, is is has autonomy they have their own police force. They have their own, you know, uh, governing body, etc. But it's not, you know, ultimately it's still in Israel. Um, I don't know if that's true of Gaza. Gaza is kind of a whole separate issue. Anyway, so she she was all for this this um, one state solution for a woman who saved many many lives and many children's lives through her hadassah, through her soup kitchens, through her clinics, and through her, you know, et cetera. And, and, and the youth, the youth movement, right? 30,000, whatever it was, she never married. And, and um, she, she, she never had kids of her own, never. Um, she was, she was um, deeply in love with, with uh, one, of the, one, of, one of the rabbis, one of the big rabbis of the conservative movement, Rabbi Louis Ginsburg, he was 15 years her junior, but he always insisted that to keep it platonic. She was really in love with him. And when she, one, eventually he broke up with her. Eventually he said, okay, this is not gonna work for me. And, and she wrote, she was, uh, wrote that it was like, she goes, um, um, today is the day where I'm six weeks um, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm six weeks away from the day that the happiness the happiest time of my life was killed so she really you know was was in love with Lewis Ginsburg and and it didn't it didn't happen there's a there's a story with her remember um, he, he the, her father only had girls so when when her mother died her mother died she came to Shul and wanted to say Kaddish. She came to synagogue and wanted to say the memorial prayer called Kaddish. And, um, and you know, many people now, they, 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 they come to Shul when they lose their loved one, they say Kaddish. Or they go to um, a site, memorialkaddish.com or whatever it is, and, and, to, and, and say Kaddish. But, but she, uh, she wanted to say Kaddish, which is very noble. So her friend, who was male, told her, you know, a woman can't say Kaddish, but I'll say Kaddish for your mother. And what she said was true and bold. What she said was, no, no, I'm going to say Kaddish. When the rabbi said that a woman is free from time-bound mitzvahs, that's only if they, um, that's for the most part, it's true. But if this is something important to me, and I'm going to make it part of my schedule, I'm going to say Kaddish for my mother. You can say Kaddish for her if you want, but I'm going to say Kaddish for my mother. And, um, and, and so she, she made sure to say Kaddish in the context of a minion and a quorum every single day. She, she passed in February of 1943. And she died, I guess it's not ironically, she died at Hadassah Hospital 
in the very hospital that she founded. And she was buried in Har Zaytin in the Mount of Olives. And um, it's very expensive to get today to get a plot in, in the Mount of Mount Olives, um, Har Zaytin. And, um, and you know, it's, it's very, exp very expensive real estate very expensive real estate and, and the, the grave are so close together etc and it's um, and it's not even so safe but um, the reason why is it is the Harzei team is the closest it's oh, it's it if, if the Temple Mount is on a uh, on a hill Harzei team is on a hill and it's overlooking the hill with the valley in between and um, and, and on top of the Mount of Olives is, is the, you know, the, the, uh, the, there's a hotel owned by the Jordanians and, you know, they built it on top of, top of the graves, et cetera. It's another real sore point, but, um, you know, you don't build things on top of graves. You got to have some modicum of, of, of humanity. And, and, but the reason why, the reason why people want to be buried there is because they say Judaism, we believe in resurrection. We believe that it hasn't taken place yet. But there will be a time we may not fully understand exactly how it's going to happen. There'll be a resurrection, and those buried on Mount Olives will be resurrected first. So there's a major push to get buried in Hazetim. So it's interesting. She was she died in 1943. In 1943, you could be buried there. But from the day Israel declared independence until the Six Day War, the Mount Olives was the Jordanians did not allow Jews to come into Jerusalem, um, you know, the old city. They didn't allow them to go east, which is where Mount Olives are. You were banned. You were banned all those years. Was it 19 years? 1948 to 1967. You couldn't visit your loved one's grave. You couldn't. Forbidden. Forbidden. It was a big, you know, it was a, it was a border up. And even though, even though the, you know the, there was supposed to be a plan for the Jews to be able to visit the the, way, like the Western Wall and able to be, visit the Mount of Olives, Jordan did not keep their side of the bargain and was stubborn for 19 years. Did not allow one Jew. Now, can you imagine? Can you imagine uh, when Israel finally in 1967 got Jerusalem back? Said, okay, not one Arab is allowed to go on the Temple Mount. Can you imagine? We don't play the same way. It's just we have a different set of rules and, and that's why it's so difficult so um israel protects and and and, and uh, protects all types of worship you can you can be anything you want you can be christian you can be muslim you can be buddha you can be baha'i uh, you can be an atheist and and you can your, your sexual preference is is no issue in, in the only the only country in the middle east where it's no issue uh, yet Israel is vilified. Go figure. Um, anyway, so when they finally, in 1967, when they finally got, had access, they had found that Mount Olives had been paved over with, by roads. They just made roads on it. So they hired, they hired people who could have um, who have maps of Mount, Mount Olives. Mount, Mount of Olives, um, of where the graves are. And they went with rabbis all around, and they, and they said, okay, so this is where so-and-so is buried, this is where so-and-so is buried. And they chipped away slowly and carefully at the road, and were able to establish where the different indentations are, and, and, and where the grave ends, and where the great beginnings. It was a very tedious task. When it came time, came close to, to um, getting Henrietta's grave, the, the head of, of Hadassah Hospital at that time, he was a doctor, a pulmonologist, I don't remember his name right now, he went with the rabbis and, um, and, and they, they, they uncovered the grave, they un, un, removed the concrete, the asphalt, whatever it was, they put up a stone once again and, um, and she's there and the stone is, the stone is there and, and uh, Mount of Olives is, is you're able to access it's a good idea to, to go with a couple of people, not yourself, and um, and especially, you know, it's just, it's a good idea. Um, now, her organization has the distinct honor and merit that it is the largest 
American Jewish organization, um, and especially the largest um, membership organization and volunteer also. Um, the, currently, to date, there is there are three hundred and thirty something thousand members of Adassa, mostly women, but um, not 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 uh, exclusively. So wh what she accomplished was just just incredible. So you just see what one person can do. It's just an amazing amazing thing. If you haven't had a chance to 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 visit the Hadassah Hospital, if you're in Israel. Make it a point to go to Mount Scopus, and you'll see just the vastness and, and, and the magnitude of, of, and it's on the cutting edge also, and that was one of the things, by the way. She said, we, we're not just going to be mediocre. We want to get the best equipment. Our x-ray clinics have to be the best equipment, and she, she strived for excellence. And uh, tip my yarmulke off to her, standing O. Um, incredible, incredible woman. God bless. If you would like to see more of, of these these uh, classes or any classes for that matter, you go to the highcenter.com forward slash academy or there it's on YouTube, youtube.com. Type in high academy and you'll see the list and, and just a plethora of classes. It's been my pleasure.